Hello and greetings. Uh, we're going to try a kinematics problem, but this time with an inclined plane. Uh, and I believe this one is also frictionless as well, as you can see there. Um, so once again, the free body diagram is already given to us, so we don't have to draw this one. Remember, for these set of problems, uh, free body diagram is very, very important in order to be able to solve and understand what's going on in the first step of solving the problem itself. So let's see what we're given here. Um, we're given a car of mass m, which we're not actually given the mass at all, which could mean one of two things. Uh, either we have to solve the mass along the way, or we probably don't even need the mass at all, which is the case here. So it might cancel out, and it will cancel out for the somehow. Yeah, it's frictionless. Which is good. We'll do another example with friction later. And the length of the driveway, which for us is actually our delta x. Doesn't look like a delta. There we go. And it starts from rest. And that's pretty much it. We're asked for three things, but each one is kind of like a step in solving the entire problem, so that's not too bad. A lot of physics problems are like that. Um, first thing we're asked to solve for as, a matter of fact, is A. And the second thing is how long, which actually means the time, and the final speed at the bottom. Remember that our, for an inclined plane, the x-axis is actually That's our y, and this is our x-axis right here. It's the negative, and this is the positive. So it's actually, the car is sliding down in the positive x direction. Okay? Uh, formulas that we'll need are Newton's laws of motion. We might need a kinematics problem as well. We won't need the ones for friction at all. Um, and the car is actually only accelerating in the x direction, not in the y. Which again, may seem trivial, but we'll actually need that later on. Um, we'll also need a very widely used kinematics equation. And uh, another one. And I think that is it. Okay, so let's see what we're given here. Take note, um, let's analyze this pre-body diagram really quick. Weight is still going straight down. And our x and y axes are inclined, are also tilted in the same way the angle of the incline is. So with that being said, the angle of the incline is also equal to the angle that the weight vector, f sub g in this case, makes with the y axis. So, um, in this case, the x component, which I can actually move down here as well, is equal to the sine of the weight, sine component of the weight, and the y component here is equal to the cosine. Okay, it kind of flips just because our angle is based on the y axis. Okay, let me erase all that. So just a reminder there which uh, trig functions we're going to use, and we'll go back to that if we need to. Okay, now I'm going to start with uh, our Newton's laws of motion. Here, I'm actually going to start with the y first. So this entire setup is not accelerating in the y according to our frame of reference, accelerating in the x, okay? And there's two forces, normal forces going up, and the cosine of the weight, cosine component of the weight is going down. So I can write that like this. 
I like capital N for my normal force. And minus mg cosine theta. That's actually the vector there. Equals zero. Or, well, let's manipulate this a little bit. Pretty much we're just moving it to the other side. And I get, uh, let me write down just the magnitude of that. That the normal force, the magnitude of the normal force is equal to not the entire weight, just the cosine component of the weight, just a fraction of the weight, essentially because of the inclined plane. That's one of the reasons why you use an inclined plane. Okay, so now we can actually use the Hume's second law. And it is accelerating. Uh, and there's only actually one force bringing it down. And that is the sine component of the weight and it's actually pointing in the positive direction too. So MAX, so MG, positive MG sine theta equals MAX. Wait a minute. Both sides have mass and this is the reason why we didn't need the mass at all because the mass at as you can see, canceled out. So the magnitude of the acceleration is just a fraction of acceleration due to gravity. It's not free fall entirely. It's just uh, since sine is always less than 1, or in between 1 and negative 1, um, in this case, it's going to be less than 9.8. Okay, And that actually sets us up for the first part. All of that just for this. 9.8 meters per second squared. Don't forget the units. Sine of the angle given to us, which was 20 degrees. I don't remember a sine of 20 off the top of my head, but the answer is indeed smaller than 9.8. Okay, so that's part A. It's the magnitude acceleration going down. And part B is looking for time. So we're going to use that e equation for B and this equation for C, as you'll see. Okay. So delta x, Vix, T plus 1 half a t squared. Wait a minute. This is actually zero. So it makes uh, our equation much more simple. One half a t squared. And we're actually looking for t. So if you solve for t, you'll end up with a square root. The two would come up. And the a would come down, the ax as a matter of fact, that we just solved for earlier. Okay, so the time is 2 times the 25 meters divided by the 3.35 that we got earlier. And take note that the units you're going to get here, it's going to be square root, there's meters on top, that will not cancel out. Actually, dial back a little bit, that will cancel out. That's why it's also always important to check the units. There you go. Um, square root of second squared will give you seconds, which corresponds to what you're trying to solve for. My bad. And if you solve all of that out, you'll get a time of 3.86 seconds. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Acceleration is not too much. It's a 25 meter long driveway. That's a pretty long driveway. Okay, and one last thing is the final speed, um, which we're going to use this equation, 
which still uses uh, acceleration we got in part A, but once again, this part goes to zero. Simplifies things quite a bit. So we just take the time, or in this case the acceleration, multiplied by the time that we just got. And you notice that one second of the second units cancels out just to leave meters per second, which indeed is the units of speed or velocity. Now, since we're multiplying a number that is bigger than three and sort of close to four, uh, we're going to get something bigger than 12. And sure enough, we get something that is closer to 13. That's 12.19. Okay. So this is a good example of an inclined plane, not too bad in how it can be used to uh, solve for certain parts of the motion using kinematics equations. But remember, your entire setup starts with the free body diagram and then Newton's laws of motion. Okay, there you go. Hope you, enjoy, hope you can follow along and hope you enjoy. Take care.